Morning. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, good morning. Um, first of all, thanks everyone for actually having me here. Uh, it's, a, it's very good to be talking in a different country and then Paris is a lovely city. Uh, so first of all, um, I'm going to be talking about annotations. That was actually a question during uh, Rasmus's key keynote. It's actually uh, very coincidental. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Rafael Doms. Um, so I'm originally from Brazil. Uh, I've been working with the PHP community in Brazil for quite a while now. Um, I've been speaking and I do a little bit of contribution to PHP, probably not enough as I should. Uh, but especially uh, in the tests uh, area, I try to help whenever possible. Um, and I have been running a few user groups around. Currently, I'm uh, helping out the Amsterdam PHP user group. OK, so uh, let's go into this. Basically, what I, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about annotations, you know, barely scrape the surface, uh, but kind of get, get the idea to everyone of, of what you can do with annotations and what the current state of annotations in PHP is. Um, so we're going to go a little bit into what annotations are, uh, why you could use them, what, what benefits they would bring, a few examples of existing libraries, and then we're going to go into how you can uh, write your own custom, custom, uh, your, your own custom uh, annotations with one of the engines that's uh, available out there. So first of all, you know, what, what are annotations? You know, what, what really does that mean? Where does it come from? What happened? You know, so from English, annotation is basically a note that you put somewhere while you're writing text, while you're reading it. Now, whenever you're reading a book and you're writing something on the, the sidebar to remember you, oh, this paragraph talks about something important, or you're like highlighting the text, that's, in English, that's an annotation. Okay, so it basically it's something that describes an aspect of your subject. So much like this note, I'm saying, well, okay, this is what this means to me. I'm, I'm putting that in my head. But that doesn't really explain annotations on, on a code level. It doesn't explain annotations as we use it. So in code speak, an annotation basically is uh, a piece of text that describes uh, a behavior, and it will affect your application during runtime. And that's key to understand. It's not just a documentation block. It's not just a comment. It's something that will have an effect. But annotations do not directly affect the semantics of your code. So just having your annotation in a code doesn't mean it's actually going to work. You need extra work around it, so you need someone who's actually going to be enforcing that annotation. So you need someone who's going to read that and say, well, okay, you added this text to this method, but I'm the one who's going to do something about it. So annotations by themselves don't have any power. They need something to act upon them. Just like your notes. I mean, if you write notes, if you don't use them for something else, they're just standing there. They're not really going to affect your experience of that text in the future. So a little background. Um, let's look at Java. We all like Java, right? Yeah, well, at least they, they did some things right in the beginning. Uh, back in 2004, Java uh, implemented general purpose annotations, or, or metadata, as they, would like, they called it back then. Um, basically, it was code that was then made available through the reflection uh, API in Java. Does anyone know what reflection is in PHP at least? Okay, so reflection basically is a form of you looking, the code looking at itself uh, to get more information on it. Uh, and basically this is what annotations look like in Java. You see everything that's uh, prefixed by an at sign? That's an annotation, and in this case this is hibernate. It's basically telling the code, look, um, this is my object. It's going to be stored in a table with the name people. Um, this is my ID. This is, so this is basically explaining to the code how it's going to be in the database. Cool. And you can see it's a very specific syntax, different from the rest of the language. 
although this is also the same syntax for Javadoc. We all know Javadoc, like PHP doc, same thing. So that's basically the same thing. That's just some background just so we can see how that uh, carries over into PHP. And PHP, so we all talk PHP, so let's stop talking about Java. Currently, PHP has no support for annotations in core. So that's the whole session. Anyone has a question? <laughs> okay, no, seriously. Um, yeah, we don't have support today, but there are other ways we can do it, and, and, and Rasmus just uh, talked a bit about it at the end of his talk. So let's look at a little bit of a timeline of what happened in PHP. So all the way back in 2000, uh, PHP saw the initial release of PHP doc. So we all use PHP doc nowadays, right? A little doc block on top of your method. It describes what comes in, what goes out. Right? We all document all our methods, right? Everyone? Yeah. We should. We should document everything so it's pretty clear what we're doing. Um, so that, that, that came in, and that was basically a, a block of comments that was attached. It really had no, no meaning to the language itself. It was just something that was clearly aimed at the developer. However, in 2005, uh, in PHP 5.1, we added an extra support in reflection called get doc comments. And this is where, you know, the game kind of changed. Because now those comments, they were no longer just comments, they actually became documentation blocks. So now the reflection engine, so as I said, it's a piece of code that's able to look into the code itself. It's now able to pick that up and say, look, this is, this is what you wrote for this method. So it can look at itself. And that's very important for annotations. So after that, we saw the first annotation engines come along. Uh, one of them that's worth a mention, it's called Stubbles. Um, it was actually developed somewhere in Europe as well um, back in 2006. And it was one of the first annotation supports available in, in PHP. Okay, so time went on. That didn't really catch on. No, not too many people using it. Um, and in 2008, uh, Doctrine 2 came along. So does anyone know Doctrine 2? Okay, so Doctrine 2 is an object relational mapper. Uh, and what it did is it brought its own uh, annotation engine to do exactly what Hibernate did, but now in PHP with uh, persistence and, and that kind of stuff. And that was pretty cool. It, it, it solved lots of problems between configuration files and, and extending classes, and I'm gonna show a little bit more of that uh, later on. But then, you know, it started to become something that, that was used a lot, especially by Doctrine, and then other people started using it. So someone decided, hey, we need this in core. Well, I know who it was. It was uh, Guilherme Blanco, uh, one of the Doctrine developers, uh, along with, I think it was Pierre Hick, right? I'm pretty sure who wrote the patch. Um, so they decided, hey, look, we want this syntax in core. You know, you want PHP to be able to analyze annotations itself and, and give us all of the support so we don't have to write it in our own library. Okay, so they tried that. It was pretty cool, but there was this bunch of new syntax because it can't be as simple as Java because our at sign is already used for the silence operator, right? Which we shouldn't be using anyway, but it's there. So we need to keep that up. So the new syntax that was proposed, you know, it, it brought a lot of complexity, as, as Rasmus said, and you know, yeah, it, it didn't work. People just said, no, no, this is, it's, it's not what we need right now, and it's, it's, uh, I completely agree with what was said. It was way too complicated. Uh, extra syntax, and we want PHP to be the simple tool we know. So what happened after that is there was another ISC which basically suggests adding uh, doc block support. So basically all the parsing of the doc blocks into annotations happens in core. It's in discussion for over a year, so I'm not sure exactly where that's going. <laughs> yeah, so we're not exactly known for being fast, and I think that's also good. So right now, yeah, really, we have no clear idea where annotation support in, in core is. I'm sure it will come along at some point because that's what happens with PHP. We need something, we push it, and it comes out. So in due time, it will be there. But for now, we have a whole bunch of other engines which we can use, and, and more and more engines are coming along. So I think we're pretty well, we're good in that. So this is an example of what they look like in PHP. This is a doctrine. So you can see this code is basically the same thing I showed you in Java. 
it's still persistence. This is a table, you know, that column is going to be persisted in this way or that way. So it's basically the same thing. So one thing that's very important to note. We all know this. So this is a comment, a multi-line comment and a single-line comment. Um, PHP has a tokenizer, which basically understands each piece of PHP code into a token. So this is a t-comment code. This is a, a t-comment token. This goes away very easy. If you're using OP code cache, uh, if you're stripping away stuff from code, this is usually the first stuff that goes. So if your annotation is in, in one of these, you're in trouble, because your annotation goes away and you're left with nothing. So it's very important to know that this is not a comment. This is actually a doc block. As soon as you have both asterisks there in the beginning, that's a doc block. So APC will cache this. Um, other OP code caches will also cache this. So this is always available, and it is available through the reflection end. So it's very important for us to note that. One more thing which is important to note about annotations. Uh, we currently have, well, you can divide annotations into two general areas. The marker annotations. So these are very simple annotations. They just tag something. Or this is deprecated. Or this returns something. They usually receive either nothing or just a plain string. It's basically what we use for documentation today. Except documentation is an annotation. And then we have parameterized annotations, which is what the Doctrine is using, uh, Symfony, and a few other examples which we'll get into. Which basically they receive a whole bunch of different parameters and they can work on and then it's good if you have a limited number. If you're adding too much stuff in there, then we get back to the problem we had with the RFC. It's just too much. So okay, let's keep it simple. Just remember those two um, different formats. Okay. So why do we need annotations? Why, well, what's it good for? And this is quite interesting. And while preparing for this talk, I, I threw the question out into the, the Twitter. And <laughs> I'm, uh, apparently, I'm very easy flame bait. So I got into a few arguments. And usually, the first thing I hear about annotations is, OK, it's hard to debug. OK, well, it's dynamic code. It should be hard to debug. But then again, you think about what we said about annotations. Um, annotations, they do not themselves actually you know, affect the semantics of code. They need a separate class which will interpret that and do something with it. So in this case, it's not really that hard to debug, because what you need to debug is not your code, but that enforcer class and how it interprets files and reads and parses the annotations. So while, yes, you might run into a few obscure bugs, it's not really that hard to debug. You know, you don't really have to debug. You just, you just need to check that the effect of the annotation is there, uh, especially if you're testing, and you should be testing. We're all testing, right? Yeah. See, you guys are just awesome developers. The other problem we have is performance. So that's usually where the whole core thing comes into. Uh, this is PHP code, analyzing PHP code, doing string comparisons and parsing and all that. And, and it is slower than it would be uh, if it wasn't core. So hopefully, once this goes into core, this is an excuse you won't have. But currently, it does, all, all the libraries out there, they do a very good job of caching. So that's not also a really big problem. And then the final one, which people really scream at me, is, oh my god, but this is in my comments. OK, it's not in your comment. It's in your doc block. We already settled that. But still, if you get a junior developer in your company, and he looks at that doc block and says, ah, what, what is this? I don't recognize this. And he erases that. Great. Now your annotation doesn't work. The effect you were expecting on your code is not there anymore. What do you do? Well. We made it pretty clear we're all documenting our methods with doc blocks, right? We all take care of our doc blocks. We all update them every single time. Same thing with annotations. I mean, those doc blocks, they're no longer just a part of the language that's there and you don't really care about it. You know, it's something that you should really pay attention to. So if a junior developer is coming in there and altering the doc block without looking back, you know, he's not doing it right. You need to really teach new developers, and especially the old developers as well, to treat those document blocks as, you know, that's part of your code. It needs to be up to date. It needs to generate the right information. And if you have annotations there, even more so. 
So, okay, that's a problem, but I think that's also a cultural problem. We need to focus more on that part of our code. But then the good point. So what can you do with annotations? Basically, annotations, they let you inject behavior uh, without having to extend objects. Um, did anyone here ever work with Doctrine 1? Okay, and we all remember that in Doctrine 1, we had to extend a base object in order to get all that persistence information and all that. And, and that's kind of like, like what Rasmus says. Why, why do I have to extend this base class all, this, all the time? You know, it doesn't fit into my architecture. So with traits, we can also inject uh, functions. With annotations, you can inject more behavior. So for doctoring now, if I want to persist a class, I don't need to extend anything. I just need to tell him, look, this class, this method, this property is actually going to be a var char in my database. Or this property needs this type of validation. So you're injecting all of that, and you're also contextualizing your configuration. Because now if you have a user object and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do about validating this object? Where, where are my validation rules for this user? They're in there. They're right in together with the property you're looking at. So instead of looking at five different configuration files, you know, you're looking at one file and one block, so everything is kind of consolidated in there. That can have problems, yeah, but overall that just really feels good to have everything in its own place. Also, a cool side effect is that all of this is now in your documentation. PHP Documenter uh, is already the new alpha version since it merged with uh, DocBlocks. It's actually, it's reading annotations and converting that into better documentation. But even if it doesn't do that, all of, all of that information that's not recognized is attached to the, the actual textual documentation you generate. So now, all of that is in your documentation. If you give that documentation to someone, he will know, oh, you're validating the length, you're filtering it, and whatever, and whatnot, whatever the annotations are doing. So that kind of really helps um, you go along. So kind of putting that into perspective, whenever you're developing a new class, your entity, so let's say, for example, you're doing your user object, right? And you're there sitting, well, I need a first name, I need a last name, I need his email, and that kind of stuff. Usually, mentally, you're putting this post-it note on your code saying, okay, well, this is going to be a varchar in my database. It shouldn't be longer than the database field. I need to remove any uh, non-alphanumeric, uh, non, well, only alpha characters. So you're putting all of that in your head, and then you're thinking, okay, once I get, I remember all that, and I'm finished with the entity itself, then you go back into your configuration files, and then you have one configuration file for how you're going to store it, one configuration on how you're going to validate it, one configuration how you're going to filter it. Yeah. So now your one property is spread out over a whole bunch of different files. And that's, you know, that, that's kind of messy. It's kind of hard to maintain. Cool, you know where all the rules are, but then if you have to work with one specific property, you're now working with three different files. So annotations lets you kind of summarize all that and put it in one place. So that those same three rules I just put into configuration, they can be here shown in one annotation. So how I'm going to store it, how I'm going to validate it, and how I'm going to filter it. Does that sound like something that you like? Does that make it easier? Well, I think so. Annotations is one of those things that it's not a general everyone likes it and everyone is going to like it or it's useful for everyone. It's something that really it needs to make sense to you. And to me, this makes sense. It makes it easier for me to work. I know exactly where to go for all of the aspects related to that piece of code. And that's cool. So, okay. Um, we have seen annotations for persistence and for validation, but you know, what else, what else is out there? What, what are the things, what are the places that we see annotations and what can we use them? So this is just a few examples of, of, of um, projects that are currently using uh, annotations. First of all, uh, PHP Documenter. That was where everything began. But you know, it's not really annotations in itself. It's using it at another level, which is more of the, the PHP doc, which the syntax is very similar, but well. And then we have PHP Unit. I mean, PHP Unit has been around for years, and it uses annotations. How many, how many of you actually knew that PHP Unit used annotations? Good, you're testing your code. Nice. So yeah, PHP Unit uses uh, basically, uh, they have a few more examples, but this is some of the most useful code you'll see. 
the data provider, which allows you to repeat one, sing one single test multiple times with different data sets, um, and the expected exception. So this is basically, it tells you, if you run this test, an exception is gonna blow up, and I expect it to be this exception. So you, know, you don't have to test that in the test itself, you're just adding that on top. Then that's useful, that's easy. I can read this test and I know what's going on. Oh, it's gonna throw this exception, cool. So that's nice, I like it. Uh, doctrine, well, we basically went through that example already. Both persistence and annotations, you can see here it's saying that this, my entity uh, now has a relationship with uh, other entity. So that's pretty cool, you know, all that information is in there, you don't need to go look at all those schema files and oh my god, I'm switching from my SQL to Postgres, you know. Ah, you know, everything is in there and Doctrine is taking care of the rest. So trust in your tools is always a good way to go. Symphony, who's using Symphony 2? Oh, I actually expected a much larger number. Cool, so uh, Symphony uses this for routing. Um, who's using Zen Framework 1? Okay. So you all have this uh, ideal standard that everything is controller, uh, module controller and name of the function, right? So you always know what route is getting to um, that one method. Uh, Symfony kind of changed that up so it doesn't really map one to one. And then you would have your configuration file say, well this is the route and it's pointing to this controller and this action. So when you're in that action you're saying, well what does this, uh, what's the your, oh my god. Once you put that in annotations, it's right there. You're looking at the method, you're looking at the URL. You know, even if it's not an annotation, I suggest you put that in the document block as well so you know what you're looking at. But this actually makes it much easier. And also for templating, it's all built in with Twig and all that, so it just says, look, just use this template for this method. Or um, in this, in, if you leave that uh, empty, it'll actually convert that name and, and make the same changes. Uh, and also for validation. I think validation is one of the best use cases for uh, annotations because this is things you don't need to worry about on an everyday basis. We just need to make sure that the rules are in place and that they're being implemented. Uh, flow free actually goes a little bit further. Uh, it does dependency injection based on annotations. So once you put that inject uh, in there, it will read the, the var declaration underneath it and, and inject an object of that type which it already has in its uh, container. And yeah, I got mixed feelings about that. It's cool, it helps, but it's also, it gets into those uh, negative uh, points we mentioned. It's harder to debug and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and also aspect-oriented programming. So aspect-oriented programming is something that's really cool. It lets you decide based on, a, on aspects of your code what's gonna happen. So that's actually a pretty cool use example, but uh, you can also start doing too much magic, and too much magic is, is all nice and pretty, but it's gonna bite you back some point. Okay, so any questions so far on what annotations are and how we've been using them? Cool. Okay, so you're developing your own project now and you want to use annotations. So right now you can use the frameworks, um, but then if you want to write your own, your own custom uh, annotations, for example, um, you have an, a REST API. You want to generate better documentation. You can use annotations for that. Uh, you have a web service, like SOAP or something, and instead of having to write all those SOAP configuration files, you can use, uh, you can generate the WSPL information from um, annotations as well. So there's a whole bunch of different use cases that you can do for extending your documentation, for validation, and. One use case that I found, and I will go into it, is, is filtering. None of the frameworks out there support filtering by annotations yet. So cool, you have your project and you want to use annotations. The one piece that's missing for you to start using them is the annotation engine. So that's, that's where things come in, you know, you gotta put that in there. So what happens when an annotation, what does the annotation engine do? So the first thing you do is you write your code and you put in a little bit of, of annotation, right? So we're using the tag, annotation, whatever. What happens is reflection will pick that up and will give us that information. Remember the method we defined back in 2005? We've had get doc comments. That's where it comes in. It will get that information and it will retrieve that string for you. So it actually gives you a string. Look, this is what, what's on top of that comment. 
nice, it's still a string. What am I going to do about this? Like, well, what, just, I have to parse this and then, you know, uh, substring and str, pos, and all that kind of stuff. That's painful. And that's exactly where the annotation engines are coming in right now. They're taking all of that string input, passing it through the engine, and spitting out on the other side an instance of an object, uh, and the parameters are passed into that object. So, yeah, it's kind of the messy part of annotation, and this is where caching is very important, because generating that object, you know, parsing strings, it's always painful to performance. But that's exactly why you need the annotation engine. And you have a few options. So Doctrine has a very good engine. Uh, ZS2 actually has an engine. It's completely undocumented at this point, so I have no idea what it does. Uh, PHP Documenter 2 in Alpha actually has a nice uh, parser, which it uses for doc blocks for its own documentation, but it also works pretty well for you to get uh, the more simply, uh, simple uh, annotations. And there's Notaj, which is written by a guy in uh, Paraguay. Actually pretty cool, uh, but very new. And, well, while I was searching, I found a few um, kind of dead projects. They have been there for a while, since 2006, 2007, but the last update was somewhere in 2008 and 2009. So I kind of wouldn't go for that. It's, it's a risk. So I looked at basically um, three of them to, to try and get what, what the best thing in. And this is back when I was de developing my own uh, library to use annotations. So I looked at Doctrine, which is cool. It supports parameterize, which is what we described at the beginning. It's very mature. It's used by everyone who uses Symfony and Doctrine and all that, which, cool, that's, that's nice. And then PHP Documenter is still in alpha. It only works mostly on the, 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 the marker types. So you still have to parse that string that's attached to your annotation. Um, and then there's Notage, which does what Doctrine does, uh, mostly the same, still has a little bit more of caching on top of it. Uh, but it's also very new, so it's not that stable yet. But it's pretty cool, something you should look at. It's on, on GitHub. So I decided, okay, cool. Um, you know, Doctrine seems to be the most stable thing right now. I'll just stick along with that. So how does Doctrine Annotation Engine actually work? So this is an example of a code of your file which actually has uh, annotations. First thing you need to notice is you need to declare which annotations you're going to use. So basically what the engine does is it picks up whatever, whatever is in your doc block, and at ORM doesn't mean anything to it. So it looks for that. It looks into your namespace importation and says, what did you call ORM? And then it converts that into the namespace. So whenever you're doing that, it's actually the annotation reader will go into that doc block and, and generate the metadata. And it will get, so it will translate ORM into um, doctrine ORM mapping slash the name of the class. So there's actually a class called column in there, which is what you're looking for. So every annotation becomes an object in a namespace. And this is how you import it. It's very important that you import it before. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you get a hit, big hit on performance. And it will try parsing and parsing and parsing and just go forever. So once you got all of that, you have instances of your annotation objects, um, and you're ready to go. It's going to be cached, obviously, because otherwise we're doomed. Uh, and then you can then pass that on to your, your code. Remember we said that annotations, they do not themselves affect the semantics of code. So basically, now you have instances which they're not doing anything. They're just standing there. So that's where your walker, your enforcer, whatever you want to call it, it's going to pick up those annotations and really implement them into doing something with that information that you passed along to it. So for the next slides, I'm going to be using um, my own library uh, as an example, just to give you an idea of how it was implemented and how you can revert that into implementing your own annotations. Uh, it's up on GitHub, pretty simple, pretty small. Uh, it basically allows you to do filtering based on annotations. So the same way you do validation, you know, filter input is also a very important part of receiving uh, data. So what are the different parts of it? First thing you have between your application code and the Doctrine engine. So the Doctrine engine will give you what we call the parser. 
Behind the, 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 the reader, sorry. Behind the reader is a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a lexer, there's a doc parser, you know, there's a whole bunch of different classes that will try to convert that string into actual annotations. Um, so it's basically going to do the parsing for you. It takes care of all that. But then, as we said, we need something on our uh, application that will cause the effect of the annotation to really be felt. So in that case, we have the filter um, object in, in, in my class, which basically is a class that will enforce the changes. So it's the one that's going to say, OK, this is your property. This is your value. These are the rules you attach to it. And I'll make that happen. Obviously, you need an uh, object which has annotations. So this is an object that has documentation blocks with annotations. And then you need your rules, so the annotations themselves. So for example, alphanumeric, um, digits, and all that kind of different filters you might want to apply. So cool. Once you have all of those elements in place, you, know, you have developed your, your rules and everything, you now can say, well, this is my object. Pass it on to the filter method and say, look, I want you to filter the contents of this entity. I want you to go into the properties and, and you know, clean them up. So the filter will say, OK, cool. It will ask Doctrine for the annotations that are in there. Doctrine will parse all of those uh, string blocks and will return to you instances of those annotations we defined earlier. So for example, alphanumeric class. Once we have all that, then we can actually so OK, this property says it should be filtered for alphanumerics. So I'm going to really go into and replace everything that's not alphanumeric. Uh, be careful about Unicode, of course. And, and get that value back, and then push it back into the object. So you've got a little cycle going on. Basically, the most important part here is your filter class, because it's making that whole description you made concrete. It's really enforcing those changes. OK, so code. We all live on code. This is an example of a simple uh, filter rule. Um, it's a no dogs rule. I actually like dogs, but still. Eh. So the first thing you need to do is you need to tell Doctrine that this class is an annotation. And you do that by using an annotation. Eh? Recursive. So nice. So basically, this tells Doctrine, look, this class is an annotation. You should look into it. And if someone asks for a no dogs annotation somewhere, this is, this is who you're looking for. Um, your constructor should be able to receive parameters. As we said, we're using the parameterized uh, version of, of annotations. So simple. You just need to receive an array. And I'll show you a little bit more uh, later on. And then you must have the method which will do something. So in this case, we need to filter out dogs. So basically, I'm going to replace dogs with nothing. Yeah, that's going to be look, it's going to look very weird, but eh, so it's a good example. So we need that method in there. Um, for this implementation, that's needed. In some implementations, you might not need them. You only need, for example, the annotation to be there, and there's someone else who's going to do something. Well, in this case, we're just encapsulating the actual rule inside this object, so it'll be able to apply the change and give you back the correct value. And then someone else will take that value into the proper place. OK. This is some big code, so I'm going to leave you to just, yeah, just take a look before I go into pieces. Otherwise, I'm going to be talking and no one will be listening. OK, so most of this code doesn't matter. Um, basically, the constructor is receiving a reader. Uh, and the filter method, so the one we referenced in the last slide, uh, it's basically going to iterate over all the properties of the object you pass it, and it's going to call the filter property method. And then that's where the magic is going to happen. Sorry, sorry, not magic, it's annotations. So it's going to ask, look, um, it's going to ask the reader, please give me all, tell me if this class is actually using the no dog filter. So that's happening right there, look. Does this method, does this property actually have a no dog filter? It will say yes or no, true or false, whatever, and then you can act on it. So once you do get that, that value and it is in there, it will then apply that change to the property. So again, it's using reflection. It's making that uh, property available. And then it's going to affect that change by calling the actual filter and replacing dogs with nothing. So once again, the annotation itself 
is not working on the object, it's just working on a string, and then this enforcer is the one who's going to actually go in and replace and, and you know, walk through that object. Is that pretty clear to everyone? Everyone asleep already? Yeah, I, I usually have that effect on people. Yeah, so anyway, that's, that's it. Um, but you can see there's a very big downside to this. And this is a simple example of implementing any type of annotations in Symfony because Symfony has the Doctrine engine behind it. So you can do this in Symfony just by doing exactly what we did here. Uh, the only problem is we're working with just one rule. And if you're filtering, you have like 5, 10, I don't know, 20 rules you want to implement. You know, alphanumeric, digit, whatever. So you need to kind of be a little bit more, you know, smart about it. So I had to take it up a little notch. So we all know the reader and the filter, right? Um, and I had to introduce two new guys, the loader and the walker. Oh, design patterns all over the place. So basically what I did is I separated this into free action. So basically the reader is doing the parsing, but now the loader, uh, it's filtering for me. So instead of telling Doctrine, well, give me this no dogs annotation, I'm just telling it, look, give me all the annotations and I'll figure out which of them are mine and which aren't. So all my annotation classes, they extend the rule class. So basically what the loader is doing is checking all of those and saying, okay, this is an instance of rule, this is not an instance of rule, this is, blah, blah. So it's giving me that group of five different filters that are applied to the same property. Uh, and then I have the walker, which is taking care of, um, well, usually your, when you have an entity, your properties are usually private or protected, right? Not everything is public. So you need to worry about making them accessible through uh, reflection. You need to walk through all that. So this is just encapsulating that code. It knows how to iterate, and it will apply all those different things. And it's very important because there are two different ways of doing this. Uh, you can have annotations in properties. You can have them in methods. You can have them in the class. So depending on how you're doing it, and if you look at uh, validations on Symfony, you have certain rules which cannot be applied to a class, certain rules which cannot be applied to a method or only a property and that kind of stuff. So these guys are taking care of validating that to make sure you're not reading something you shouldn't. Uh, the flow is pretty much the same. The filter is going to uh, get a walker object, pass that object into it. It's going to access the, the reader, which will feed the loader of a whole bunch of different annotations, which will pick out the right ones. And then we'll send that information to the walker who can then really apply that and make it happen. Cool. One thing that's left is the parameters. So how does this actually become something in my object? So this is pretty simple. It's a key value pair that's being passed here. So it's actually pretty simple. The only exception is that name in there is actually the default property. So your annotation needs to tell uh, Doctrine Look, if there's no key, if it's a numeric key, I actually mean name or white space or whatever it is. So in this case, one of the injection options you have is through the constructor. Basically, all of that's going to become an array, and it's going to be passed into the constructor, nice and easy. Uh, or if it's just one value, it's just going to pass that value in, and then your object needs to figure out, OK, this is the content of my default property. It's still easy. You can also do. Uh, injection by uh, properties or, or setters and, and getters. It will basically look, well, if it's nullable key, then it's going to look for the nullable property and pass that in there. And if it doesn't have a key, so it's going to call the default property code and replace that and do that. This code, you shouldn't write this, but that's just to get the idea of what's, what's going on in the end. So yeah, quite simply, for uh, filtering, that's what's going on. I'm telling you in this case, for example, alpha true. So basically when you have an alpha filter and you pass it true, you're saying, look, uh, I'm allowing white space. So instead of having alpha open brackets allow white space equals true, the default property syntax lets me just use alpha true. That can get a little bit confusing, uh, but this is very much standard for all of the, the, the rules in the library, so you can, you can get away with it. And basically, that's what it does. So at the end, it's going to replace whatever is not alphanumeric and whatever is not an alpha character, and it's going to remove that from the string. So that's pretty simple. OK, so that's just about the time I was planning. Um, 
basically what we went through, what annotations are, you know, they really allow you to um, put all your configuration into context, you know, bring everything in and, and, and keep that information in one place. Uh, and they allow you to do so much more than just validation and filtering, which we focus here. Uh, but you have a lots of other examples, and, and like uh, PHP Unit does it, and, and what um, Flow Free and Sync Free 2 are using. So there's a lot of potential for the use of annotations. Uh, again, it's one of those things that it needs to make sense to you for you to put it into your project. I, you, it's very hard to convince someone that's totally against annotations to use it, so I don't even try. But to me, it makes sense because it makes it easier for me to maintain my code once I go through it again. All the, all the rules, everything is in the same place. And I can also do a lot of that with uh, documentation. So with that, does anyone have any questions? Do we have a microphone? Thank you. I mean, what is your main being with uh, annotation? When I read the PHP documentary output, it's a light bit crazy. But when uh, I read the PHP manual, it's more user friendly because you have a lot of comments, a lot of tests, a lot of output results. And it's pretty hard to put this kind of helpful documentation at the documenter. What do you think is uh, it's possible to uh, merge the both? OK, uh, well, the, the merge with uh, PHP Documenter and DocBlox, uh, the one thing to gain is, yeah, PHP Documenter is dated. It's very much dated and was very much you know, left in the past. So once it merged with uh, DocBlox, it brought all of this new blood that was developing DocBlox. Um, and actually, the documentation looks much better. Uh, the one thing that came in is, so um, I know Mike, the guy who creates uh, DocBlox and it's now in, in PHP Documenter. And he's working on actually parsing the annotations themselves. So not just doc blocks, uh, lock the, the doc tags, but actually the annotation itself and converting that into more readable output, which is great. So for example, if you, docu if you run PHP Documenter on one of these entities, uh, it will actually look into those uh, doctrine tags and say, well, this is persisted in the database as a column such and such and blah, blah, blah. So that's very useful. It, it, made that much better, and it looks so much prettier. I mean, if you compare it to what PHP Documenter looked for, yeah, well, it's very dated. So that merger definitely brought new ideas. So um, as far as I've heard, there's also some work into rejuvenating the whole PHP doc syntax, into removing a few things we're not using. For example, we now have namespaces. So we don't need to put package and sub-package and category and all those tags into objects anymore. So all of that is coming in uh, with that. Uh, and with, with annotations, if the, doc, the, if the PHP doc parser can turn them into more readable documentation, awesome. Even if it can't, if that documentation is just coming along with the description of the method or the property, that's already a plus in my book. It's already a, a, an easier place to, to go for but your code is still the best documentation you have. So it looks easier to write or to read on, a, on the doc block itself than in any documentator out there. So it's still a good place to use them. Does that answer the question? Anyone else? Well, this is going to be a hard question. <laughs> Hello. Um, do you think you can make a Rasmus Love annotation? And if yes, with which argument? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Well, I, I followed very closely the whole discussion um, in, in, in internals, and I saw both sides of the story being, well, I was sitting right next to Guilherme while he was fighting everyone in core, so <laughs> I saw both sides of the story. and. It's what I said, annotations is very much something that needs to make sense to you. If they don't make sense to you, I can stand all day here showing you great examples, and you won't like it. You know, it still looks like, but the reasons to not like it, I think they're becoming less and less with the new uh, engines and all that. So I, I think that's pretty good. Um, but still, 
if you don't really see a use for annotations yourself, it's very hard for someone to just tell you, look, this is the best thing since sliced bread. They will not believe that. So context to me is what really made the switch. You know, I'm, I have all that information in there, and that is so much, so good to me. One more question up there? I think we still have time, yeah. Like in mm, a doctrine, for example, they are using proxy objects or caching okay, metadata. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Uh, what, what happens is there are three levels of caching in doctrine, so don't get them confused. Yeah. Um, basically, what doctrine does is it caches the metadata for that class. So it says this property has this information, th these metadata, uh, these uh, annotations tied to it. Um, and then it will cache that information. So instead of parsing that string every single time, it already knows what annotations are in there. And then you can use memcache, APC, or whatever caching uh, structure you, you would like for that. Uh, just one more thing. Um, thank you very much for coming. And please, uh, this talk is up on joined in. Rate it, comment, tell me I suck, tell me I was good. You know, just give me feedback so we can carry it forward uh, and give more information. Thanks. Oh, and that, that last question about cash, uh, I actually have a book for you. That was a good question. Alors, juste pour la pause, uh, ça va être maintenant une pause uh, avec du café, des viennoiseries, ainsi de suite. On va reprendre à 30, donc ça va être assez court. Il uh, y a des deux côtés des cafés, des viennoiseries. Si vous allez de ce côté-là, vous pouvez passer par le stand Zend, euh, vous faire prendre en photo avec le bonhomme, le super-héros Zend, et gagner des t-shirts. Voilà.